parent finding out your child has a serious illness. Now, a leading cancer charity is warning about the damage it can do to a mother or father's mental health, both during and after their child's treatment. Click Sergeant surveyed nearly 300 parents and carers of young cancer patients and found many have suffered from depression, anxiety and panic attacks. Some said they felt pressured not to speak out about their problems because they had to be strong for their child. Others said concern about their finances caused additional stress. We're going to start by hearing one couple's story. They have been speaking to Click Sergeant. Abby spiked two more temperatures during the day today. Panic mode sets in. You're stressing because worrying about her, worrying about the little one because she's away, worrying about each other because it's, you know, stressful in itself. Things go through your mind that you just can't help. This is our life. It's just what we have to do. Abby's poorly quite a lot, especially now she's in maintenance. I think the worst part was when we took her to the hospital and they came back and, yes, and they said, yeah, she's got leukaemia. I mean, that was... Excuse me. That was devastating. And you just want to crack up, but you kind of know you can't crack up because you've got to stay strong for her and try and not show her the fear that you're feeling. You're feeling angry, you're feeling upset, confused. What do I do next? Where do I go? Who do I tell? You go into autopilot, it's chemo this day, injection that day, bloods this next day, and that is what your life consists of. I was numb to it, really. I, I wasn't Debbie anymore. I was just Abby's mum, and I didn't kind of know who I was. Well, figures from charities suggest four children are diagnosed with cancer in the UK every single day. So let's now speak to some parents who know what impact that can have. Jenny Dalton was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder after her daughter was diagnosed with a rare type of cancer. Debbie Moran, you've just seen her in the clip that we played. She was hospitalised with a suspected mini-stroke while dealing with her daughter's leukaemia. And also here in the studio is the chief executive for the cancer charity, Click Sergeant Kate Lee. Uh, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's start with you, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Post-traumatic stress disorder, mm -hmm. it is something we think of soldiers when we hear about it. Tell us what happened to you. Isabella has had an incredibly long journey, seven years um, of treatment with her, with her tumour, neuroblastoma. And it just got to the stage where I was struggling. I was really struggling. Um, the nightmares, the constant worry of, you know, Isabella's relapsed, you know, three times now. So it's just that fear of, are we going to beat it? Is my daughter going to get better? It's just there constantly. It doesn't go away. Um, and then when you've got that mixed up with your daughter's treatment, the emotional impact, the financial impact, it all comes together. And I just got to the stage where I put my hands up and I said, you know what, I can't cope. I'm really, really struggling. I need some help, I need some support. And uh, I went to see my GP and he said, yeah, you're showing all the classic signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. And, and when he said that, mm. what did you think? I suppose I was relieved, really, because you, you get to a stage where you think, am I, am I losing my mind? Am I going mad? You've just got so much constantly going on in your head and you're trying to juggle everything and, you know, get the best support and treatment for your child and you, you're worried about them and you don't think about yourself. But it was, it was, it was slow, you know, it was a slow process and, and it just hit me and I just thought, something's not right. I don't feel myself, I don't feel... I can carry on. And when the doctor said, you know, yeah, you, you, you know, you've got a diagnosis, you've got post-traumatic stress disorder, I thought, yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised that I have what I've been through. It isn't surprising. Yeah. And yet, I guess the sad thing is that people in your situation, perhaps, mm. I mean, did anybody talk to you? They obviously talked to you a lot about your daughter's condition, and yeah. that was very important. But did anybody say to you right at the outset, this might be really hard for you? All the way through, friends, family, people say to you, you need to look after yourself, you need to be strong. Did you believe them? I mean... Well, I, I knew I needed to look after myself, but how? How do I look after myself? I'll just go on holiday for a week, shall I? I'm just, you know, my daughter's in the middle of treatment. Shall I just go on holiday? Shall I go and check myself into a spa for a couple of days and relax? 
I know I need to look after myself, but you can't when you're at the hospital constantly for nearly seven years. What, you, what do you do? <laughs> did, you, did you feel guilty that you were struggling when your daughter was in such a terrible situation? Because if I, if I go under, what happens? You know, what happens to my daughter if I go under? I need to be strong. Um, but to be honest, when I put my hands up and I said I'm struggling and I started to get support, I felt better about myself. Um, I felt stronger. I felt more able to, to support Isabella. And I was just so glad that I did put my hands up and say, I need, I need some support, I need some help here, I'm not coping. So it was like a weight was lifted, really. Mm. Let's talk to Debbie about her experience. Debbie, thanks for waiting patiently. Um, I mean, listening to what Jenny has to say, presumably you, um, you can understand all those emotions and more. Totally, yeah. I totally understand where Jenny's coming from. It is very much as they say, they tell you to look after yourself, and it is where, where do I look after myself? Um, it's very hard. Well, how do you find that space? I don't really know how you do find that space, really. When your child's really ill and they're going in hospital and everything, it's very difficult to find that space. Um, it's catching moments as and when you can, really. You know, if your child's well and you feel like you can have five minutes off to yourself, then that's when you, you have it. But it's very difficult to, to get that. Tell us about your daughter. Um, Abigail is six. She was diagnosed when she was three. Um, she's got leukaemia, ALL. Um, we're currently two years and two months into our treatment. Uh, she's doing well at the moment, but uh, obviously initially it's very hard and you kind of just get into that mode and go through the treatment, go through each stage, you know, your chemo, without really thinking about it or trying not to think about it really. But um, she's a, a funny little girl and she smiles most of the time all the way through it, as do most of the children that are affected with cancer, surprisingly. Do you think she feels your anxiety? I try not to let her feel my anxiety, but I think at times, yes, she does. Um, I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or, or not, really, that you try and stay strong. Obviously, they need to know when you're worrying and when you're fretting, but she'll, she will turn around and say to me, Mum, I'm fine, just let me do this. But it's very hard to switch off at times. And Jenny, that's the hardest thing, isn't it? Yeah. You, you want to protect your child from this and yeah. from what you're feeling because you're meant to be strong. Mm -hmm. You're meant to be helping them. Mm -hmm. And yet, I mean, do you worry that your daughter picks up on the, the stress that you're under? I, I say, same as Debbie, I, I try my best to not he let her see it, you know. <laughs> she doesn't need the added stress of worrying about her mom on top of everything else. Um, but it's, it's, it's just so hard. Um, especially at night, you know, it's, it's at night times when she's asleep, and I know she's asleep and she's, she's settled, she's not in pain, she's, she's, she's asleep, she's fine. That's when it hits me, and that's the hardest part, and that's when I do most of my crying in the middle that of the night. moment of relaxation yeah, when it all definitely. catches up with you. Yeah. Kate Lee, it's clearly a problem that isn't spoken about enough. Um, what support is out there for people? I think uh, our concern at Click Sergeant is that the support is patchy around the country. So we know that uh, organisations like Click Sergeant, we have a social work, social worker network across all the UK working directly with parents. Uh, and our social workers will try wherever possible if a parent says that they're struggling and need help uh, to get them referred into an NHS counselling service, but often that takes a long time. I mean, are, are GPs picking up on this? I think um, if parents ask for help, I don't know how much it's we concerned problem, it? whether it's proactively offered. Yeah. Um, I think GPs try. I think sometimes healthcare professionals think that as soon as the child's out of treatment, then it's all okay. And actually, lots of parents tell us that the trauma starts after the treatment ends, and all the healthcare professionals disappear because that's when they start thinking. I mean, one dad said to me a couple of weeks ago: every time he sees a bruise on his ten-year-old boy, he's convinced the leukemia is coming back. And yet, ten-year-old boys have a lot of bruises, <laughs> you know, and that's a good, healthy thing. Um, you know, and just living with that constant fear, um, whereas lots of people think, oh, it's over now, you know, the treatment's finished, they're well. Um, so it's really trying to understand that it's a long-term impact. Um, often children are treated miles away from home, our NHS isn't well set up to provide counselling services for parents that aren't in their local GP practice. Often parents don't see their GP for a long time because they're living in, you know, Bristol or Birmingham or miles from home. 
And this actually, I mean, this is, we talk about this constantly, don't we, about the need for greater understanding within the NHS of mental health issues. Yeah. And we're joining through this Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. The issue we want to raise awareness for is Click Sergeant's support as the UK's largest children's cancer charity to support all those other mental health charities in saying mental health provision in the UK still isn't good enough. And we must, must look at improving this. And thinking about unusual cohorts like parents of children with cancer who are spending most of their lives in hospitals. So what's the provision available in hospital rather than out in the community? Um, and also just remembering that most parents are kind of wrenched out of their family network, their friends network, you know, because they're sent to hospitals. When your child's got cancer, you're often sent to hospital a long way from home. Um, Debbie Moran, uh, I mean, it's very brave of you to come on and talk about this, and, and that in itself is going to help plenty of parents who are unfortunately in the same situation as you. Do you have any specific advice that might help mothers and fathers? Don't be afraid to ask for help at the end of the day, you know, you you are allowed to crumble. Um, I know you do your best to be able to be strong, but, you know, if you crumble, then speak to somebody, you know, don't think that you have to be brave all the time. You need help too, you're going through it as much as your child is going through it. And Jenny Dalton? There are professionals out there who, who, whose job it is to help you, you know, I don't know what we would have done as a family without the support of our Click Sergeant Social Worker Chrissy. She was just absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, just ask for help. Tell people. Tell people I'm struggling. I am really struggling. I need, I need some help. Because it's the hardest thing as a parent that you will ever have to go through to see your child so poorly. And you need, you need to be strong for them. And a real yeah. plea for dads to do that too, because I think often there's a lot of emphasis, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of support kind of focus from people who see mum going through it but actually we know that there's a real problem for dads because they feel they have to be strong. Yeah. You often forget that mm. fathers actually may hide a lot more than mothers yes. do. Yeah. Um, Debbie Moran, thank you very much for coming. Jenny Dalton as well and, and Kate Lee. Thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Thank you. Still to come, how clean will your house